few Jewish leaders commend the respect and admiration that Edgar Bronfman, WJC president for the last 25 years, has earned. His personal commitment to fight for what he believes in, for justice, for truth, for respect, and for the future of the Jewish people, has seen him travel the four corners of the globe to meet with world leaders and to give his personal support to Jewish communities in need. Since his election as president in 1981, Edgar has guided the WJC through many crucial campaigns and has ensured its evolution into the truly global and professional body that it is today. Edgar's personal commitment to help Jewish communities in need, small communities, isolated communities, communities in danger or under threat, has been unrivaled. He has visited numerous communities to meet with Jewish communal leaders, hear their concerns, share their burdens and offer his support. When Argentine Jews were devastated by the bombing of the AMIA Jewish Communal Center in July 1994, with the loss of over 85 lives, Edgar insisted on personally leading a WJC delegation to visit the site, to offer comfort to the victims' families and to the community, and to assure Argentina's Jews that they were not alone. When Jews in the Soviet Union were discriminated against, or even persecuted for simply wanting to practice their religion freely or to make Aliyah to Israel, Edgar met with them to ensure their voice was heard. But Edgar has also been the face of world Jewry, received by countless heads of state, prime ministers, global leaders and religious figures. He alone has been able to represent world Jewry, respected by his fellow Jews and accepted as a peer by presidents. As president of the World Jewish Congress, you fought persecution, helped to preserve Jewish heritage, and struggled to secure justice for victims of the Holocaust. You've been a powerful voice for human rights, and in so doing have earned our nation's deep gratitude. But I especially want to thank you for bringing to Hillary's attention and then to mine the importance of finding justice for victims of the Holocaust. I think we did a good job with it, but it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't begun. I think you're a model citizen, as well as a committed advocate, and I'm so grateful to call you my friend. One of the most overwhelming thoughts that comes to my mind is the close partnership that you have formed with us at the Carter Center for the last uh, more than 20 years. The last retirement years of my life have been the most productive of all, and a, large of that, a lot of that productivity for me has been the help that you've given us at the Carter Center. His philosophy that the measure of a good society is how the majority protects its minorities has been a guiding principle in his personal mission. And his diplomatic skills, finesse, integrity and wisdom have led to achievements far surpassing those of any other contemporary Jewish leader. Edgar, father of seven and grandfather of 23, is also a father figure to a new generation of Jews. His personal support of Jewish students and his interest in Jewish youth has been an inspiration to many. To programs like the Bronfman Fellowship, bringing young American Jews to Israel, myjewishlearning.com, opening Hillel chapters internationally, and his determination to meet with young adults wherever he goes, Edgar has contributed to a Jewish renaissance and has instilled young Jews with an interest and pride in their Jewish heritage. Edgar has also always passionately believed in the need to support Israel and has been a partner to dozens of Israeli prime ministers and presidents in searching for a peaceful resolution of the conflicts that have caused so much loss and pain and in striving for a better life for all the people of the region. Jewish to me means uh, I'm a member of a, of a family that goes back to Abraham. Being Jewish to me means I have certain ethics that I follow. Being Jewish to me means that there are certain precepts that I believe in, like tikkun olam, uh, and being God's partner in, in creation. Well, the fight against anti-Semitism, unfortunately, 
has to head the list. That oldest of hates keeps cropping up, and it seems that all the anti-Semites need is an excuse. I think that the world is now threatened with the so-called clash of civilizations, Islam versus Christianity with Judaism on the side. I think that, therefore, the World Jewish Congress has to be one of the leaders in having a dialogue with Islam. And I think the third item on our list has to be the renaissance of Judaism, or Jewish renaissance. We have to realize that uh, because of ignorance and apathy, we're losing Jews right and left. And if Jews can be proud of being Jews, uh, then I think the battle is over, except that you can't be proud in a vacuum. You have to know what you're proud of. Therefore, knowledge is terribly important. His belief that, as the Talmud says, even if one cannot complete a task, one is not free of the obligation to begin it, coupled with his determination to fight for what he believes to be right, has meant that he has never shied away from any challenge, no matter how daunting. <laughs>